Dungeness on the Kent coastline, home of artist, gardener, writer and filmmaker Derek Jarman. Although Jarman's reputation for controversy and outrage rested on feature films like Sebastian or Jubilee, it was his Super 8 movies which offered the most personal and intimate insight into his world. As well as offering a cheap and ready alternative to the frustrations of feature film production, Super 8 was the perfect format for Jarman to chronicle the people and events of his world during the 70s and 80s. It's from this material that his film Glitterbug is made. The importance of home movies as a creative force can be traced back to his father's own obsession with amateur filming. Well, my father had 16mm, in fact. It was, uh, so he had a super 16mm uh, camera and, uh, and a lot of that footage in the war is in colour, of course, which is rather rare. Here's my mother. She was born in Calcutta, brought up in Bexhill and... Uh, and this is myself and my sister with her. It must be, I don't know, in the late 40s that, I mean, mid 40s, just uh, time the end of the war. They were obsessive photographers. My father was a very good photographer. The home movie is very good. Everyone who sees it is surprised. He was technically very accomplished, my father. He could have easily have, I think, been a, a film cameraman if he wanted to be. And you began to work with Super 8 film. Could, could you say something about that? Well, it, 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 what happened was that I was, um, I was painting still and doing the theatre designs, and I had done uh, Russell's Devils by that time. And, um, and someone came to the studio with, a, you know, literally a home movie camera. I thought, that's an interesting thing. Would you like to borrow it? So I said, yes, I would. And I, I, I made a three-minute film of the studio this is 1970, I'm 71, and I started to make these films, and it was a really amusing uh, thing to do because everyone came to watch them. So I used to be able to give these parties, wonderful parties, and everyone would come and no one paid any attention to the films whatsoever. <laughs> they were all there, you know, all bought cushions and lay on the floor. And we showed a proper film, 16 millimeter, something, you know, proper feature film, and then we would end up with the Super 8s. I've tried to unlearn the grammar. But that was, you could easily do that on a Super 8 camera because it had all sorts of surprise knobs. So you could film in odd ways, which you could never do with a 16mm or 35mm camera in order to get those effects, if you like to think of them as effects. I mean, what I was influenced by and interested me all the way through the 60s was the American underground cinema. And it started with Anger. I went to the very first screening of his Scorpio Rising in this country. And uh, there was that connection, and that cinema really interested me because it seemed to relate to the world that's much nearer to the world that I was living in, especially the Warhol stuff. Everyone asked me so often, I mean, how these films were made. And there's absolutely no secrets. They were all made on a very simple Nizo 480 camera. There were no opticals. Uh, everything was done in the camera, all refilming. In a way, I think they're the centre of my filmmaking. I find them, for myself, obviously, as interesting, perhaps more interesting, than the feature films, because they deal directly, more directly with my experience, in a way. Um, it's, of course, always very difficult to convince people of that. <laughs> I've carried on making films like this. I still make them. I think it's important for any filmmaker to keep his centre or her centre.